Hi, my name is Natalie and younger visitors might recognise me because I'm the Learning and Engagement Officer here at Sarah Hall Mill. So I'm taking us back to the Victorian times. Um, our mill will be fully operational, it'll be really noisy, they'll be really smelly and really dusty with the flour around. Our miller, his name is George Andrew and him and his family would live ju just on the other side of the mill where our tea room is now um, and he'll be in charge of the operational side of the mill. He would have some helpers with him and a baker based in the bakehouse too. So the mill would be the centre point for the village. Um, we're in Hall Green at the moment, but this was called Sare Hall, hence Sare Hall Mill. It would be a source where the villagers would come and buy their bread, of course, and their flour, but also they would bring their goods to the mill to bake in our oven as well. So if George Andrew would like to grind some grain, the first step would be oh, go outside and open the sluice gate to allow the water to enter the mill. Um, a lot of mills get their water from a river, but we actually have our own source of water because we have a mill pond. So we'll head outside so we can go and have a look at the mill pond and we can go and have a look at the sluice gate that we would open to allow the water to go into the mill wheel. So out here is our mill pond. It's really important that we have a mill pond because um, it gives that steady source of water nearly all year round. If you're on the river and the water levels were dropping really low in the summer, you'd struggle to power our mill wheel. It is very green at the moment because it's covered in pond weed. It's just because it's so still and we've not had a really cold winter either. So you might wonder where our water comes from. There's a little patch in the hedge just at the back, a little hole, and that's where Coldbath Brook, which just rises in Moseley Golf Course, comes over and fills our pond, and of course it's filled with rainwater as well. So let's go and have a look at our sluice gates, just on this side here. There's a big wheel on the top, so George Andrew would turn the wheel, the sluice gate would lift up, and obviously the water from the pond would then rush into the mill. He would need to go around and open the other sluice gate from the inside, and then that water would hit the wheel, filling up the buckets, and then the weight of the water would start, that wheel start to turn, and then the gears would start to turn, which then turns the millstones, grinding that grain into flour. So we can have a closer look on how the millstones work because I have a quern stone. These are smaller versions of millstone that I can actually use by hand and we'll do that over in the restored bakehouse. So we're in front of the bakehouse. We have just hired our baker and there hasn't been a baker here for over 150 years so that's really exciting. So we'll head inside because I've got more to tell you. So these are our small millstones, we can move them by hand. And the other name for these millstones is a quern stone. There are people all over the world that still use these quern stones in their houses to make their own flour today as well. So what we need to do is get some grain and drop the grain into this hole in the middle of the stone, this is called the eye. The top stone, this is the one that moves, this is the runner stone. And then the bottom stone is the bed stone. Easiest way to remember, run a stone, runs, it moves. And the bottom stone, bed stone, when you're asleep, you should be still. So we can use this one by hand, but obviously in the mill, those mill stones will be powered by the water power. So I start to turn the stone. And then it should be ground and it will fall down. Let's have a look. So it doesn't really look like flour yet. This is called meal. We need to get all those bits out. So there's bits of bran and seed casings. In the mill, that will be done with a dresser machine, but we can use a sieve. And now we have our flour. So it's a mix of wholemeal and white flour at the moment. If we wanted to separate them, we'd have to use a finer sieve with little holes in, and that's just how they would have done it in the mill as well. So we've got our flour, we are ready to make our bread. So obviously the baker would add more ingredients, make into a dough, leave to prove in this room, and then they'll be ready to put into the oven. So the oven would take hours and hours to heat up, and then they would use the peel to slide the dough right to the back so they could get up to 60 loaves in this oven. Then they'll be ready to go, close the oven, and then when the bread is ready, the villagers can come and collect it. So thank you for joining me. This was really the highlights of the mill. There's lots more going on and lots more history about our mill as well. If you're a school or home educating group, you can book on a school session and you can make your own flour with the quern stone, um, or you can even make your own bread here as well. Um, if you come on an event day, we have demonstrations going on and about our tours as well, so you can find out a bit more about the mill. So thank you for joining me, um, and I hope we'll see you again soon.